Last time we saw some families of symmetric functions. Let me remind you what they were. There was, I wrote each family as a row vector because we wanted to use transition matrices. So the row vector m denotes. is the character value at a permutation of shape lambda. That means, the cycle decomposition of W is a partition of shape lambda. And in the irreducible representation indexed by the partition mu. And the transition matrices we got, oh there is one more matrix I need to define. Uh, this is a simple one. J is a permutation matrix its is either 1 or 0 depending on whether lambda is mu prime or not. Left multiplication by j has the um, interchanges the columns the lambda no, no the rows lambda and lambda prime through. And with a little help from the RSK correspondence we showed that E is m k prime j k. We had actually proved that E is m times something we had called n lambda mu 0 1 matrices, but by the dual RSK correspondence that is k prime j k. H is m k prime k. P is m k prime x. If you look at these equations, you feel that everything goes through m k prime. So, why do not we give those a name? We define S to be m k prime. That means that S lambda is summation k lambda mu m. mu for every partition lambda of n. I am just rewriting this matrix product in terms of a summation. And these are called the Schur functions as interpreted by Kostka. I am doing things a bit backwards. This was not the first definition of Schur functions. This was a theorem of Kostka's, but we will go to the other definition and present that as a theorem. Classically, they were studied as symmetric polynomials in a finite number of variables. 
Now the usual way to go from infinitely many variables to finitely many variables is to write f of x1 xm for f of x1 xm 0 0. You just set all but the finitely And then we use the transition matrix, uh, maybe with some restrictions on the. But if, for example, you are working with partitions of n and you take at least n variables, then everything is fine. All these, uh, these will, this will, these m lambdas, where lambda ranges over partitions of n, will still form a basis of the symmetric functions in n variables. If, if you take partitions of n, m lambda where lambda is a partition of n will still form a basis of symmetric functions of degree n in n variables. Or if you take more than n variables that will still work. Okay? So, if you take more variables than the degrees of your partitions, then all these uh, arguments that I gave before will work. And classically, people worked with finitely many variables. So, now when I say um, sure function of m variables, I mean that you take the sure function of infinitely many variables and set the um, all but the first m variables to be 0. Now, let me give you Cauchy's definition of sure functions. So, here is a bit of notation. Suppose alpha is a multi index alpha 1, alpha 2, but now we are working with only finitely many variables, say m variables. I will take a finite multi index. Okay. Then um, I can define a polynomial A alpha to be x 1 to the power alpha 1, x 1 to the power alpha 2 x 1 to the power alpha m. It is a determinant x 2 to the power alpha 1. x m to the power alpha 1. The determinant of this m by m matrix. This is a homogeneous is this homogeneous? Yes, because it is a homogeneous polynomial of degree alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus dot 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 alpha m, because any term in this determinant would choose exactly one entry from each column. But it is not symmetric, because if you interchange two variables, the sign changes. It is not symmetric. Hmm. Okay. Let me look at an example. Let us define delta to be the multi index m minus 1, m minus 2, all the way down to 0. Then A delta is this determinant x 1 to the m minus 1 x m to the m minus 1, but each row the powers decrease to 0. That is the that is the van der Mond determinant, which you must have seen sometime evaluated as where i and j are between 1 and m. You probably know how to do this.
Okay. Let me just point out one thing. If you expand this, well, any A alpha as summation over multi indices C beta x to the beta, then it has the property that if you suppose beta is, you know, beta 1 beta m and suppose I just uh, permute the beta i's. So, um, I look at beta prime or maybe yeah, okay, beta prime do not confuse it with any transpose or anything to be beta w 1 beta w m where w is a permutation of 1 to m. Right? Then the relation between C beta and C beta prime is that C beta prime is epsilon w times C beta, where this is the sign character, the determinant of the permutation matrix for w. In particular, if two of the betas are equal, then you can look at the permutation which interchanges them. Suppose beta i is beta j, then you have that you take w to be you take w to be the transposition i j, then beta prime is equal to beta. So, what you get is that c beta is minus c beta, which implies that c beta is equal to 0. The only monomials which occur in this thing must have all their, um, uh, the multi indices must have all their uh, parts different. Okay. And um, if you have a multi index and you know the value of C beta for that multi index, if you rearrange the parts, you can predict what the uh, coefficient of the permuted multi index is. So, all you need to do to write down one of these guys, one of these Q-symmetric polynomials is know the coefficient of each strictly decreasing multi-index. Okay, so, you only have to worry about the strictly decreasing multi-indices, because if two parts are equal, the coefficient is 0 and if it is not strictly decreasing, but had distinct parts, you just rearrange them so that they, have, they are strictly decreasing and then up to some, you know, you can determine the sign, but it will just. Okay. Okay, now, I will give you Cauchy's definition of the Schur functions. For us, it is a theorem. S lambda is A lambda plus delta divided by A delta. This is alternating and this is alternating. So, if you interchange two variables, both of them change sign. So, this becomes symmetric. Okay, let me give you the proof of this. It will use these transition matrices. Um, this, uh, okay, this transition matrices can be written in terms of Schur functions. In fact, they look much nicer. This becomes S J K, H becomes S K and P becomes S X. This is a nice one. The power sum symmetric polynomials are related to the Schur functions by the character table of the symmetric group. You can just rewrite these, but these um, each of these identities actually um, characterizes the Schur functions because, um, well, certainly these two. This there's some problem if your characteristic is not right, 
but uh, either of these for any field they characterize the sure functions because here is a basis and here is another ba uh, uh, so you can um, invert this and so that actually defines the sure functions. So, if we want to prove that something is a sure function we can just show that it satisfies these identities. We want to show that the s lambdas are all sure functions we just have to show that they satisfy these identities. I will show that all of them in one stroke are sure functions. It suffices to show that E mu, I will use the first identity is I will just expand it out. k lambda prime mu s lambda. This lambda prime has come because of the j in that equation. For these guys, okay, so let us just be a little careful here. I should not write this. This we already know. What I want to really prove is that if I put a lambda plus delta over a delta here, then I will get this. So, maybe I can write it as a delta e mu is a and here I should write a lambda plus delta. Okay, this is what I want to show for all uh, mu and here lambda ranges over all partitions of n if mu is a partition of n is for all partitions <coughs> mu of n. In order to do this, it suffices to show that the coefficient of x raised to lambda plus delta is the same on both sides for every lambda, because uh, we need to worry about monomials with strictly decreasing um, multi indices as I said. And every strictly decreasing multi index is of the form lambda plus delta for some partition lambda. This delta just takes a partition and then turns it into a strictly decreasing partition. And conversely, we have a strictly decreasing partition, you can subtract delta from that and still get a partition. So, for this, it suffices to show that the coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta is the same on both sides. Okay. What is the coefficient of x raised to lambda plus delta on this side? Let us just go back to the definition of a lambda plus delta. It is over here. Now, here alphas are the lambda plus delta. So, alpha 1 is, uh, so you can just think that these alphas are in strictly decreasing order. Then you look at each monomial here, it is, there is only one monomial whose power, where the power of x 1 is strictly greater than the power of x 2, which is strictly greater than power of x 3 and so on. Namely, the one where the diagonal monomial, any other monomial the multi index will not be strictly decreasing. So, there is only one multi index here which is strictly decreasing in this uh, in the expansion of this determinant. Is that clear? Okay. The moment you interchange these two then it stops being. Therefore, and here we are looking for the coefficient of a strictly decreasing monomial. Each of these guys only contributes one strictly decreasing monomial, namely x to the power lambda plus delta. So, the coefficient of x to the power lambda plus delta here must be k lambda prime mu, because no other term other than this will contribute x to the lambda plus delta, because no other term will contribute any other, uh, will contribute any other strictly decreasing monomial besides one, I mean. So, uh, coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta on the RHS is 
k lambda prime which means that all we have to do now is to show that the coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta on the left hand side is also k lambda prime mu. To do that, let us look at what the monomials in A delta E mu look like, right. You start with, um, well this is A delta E mu 1, E mu 2 and so on, E mu And each monomial in this product is obtained by starting with a monomial here and then picking one of the monomials in each of these um, elementary symmetric polynomials and then multiplying all that together. We want to see how many ways can we get x to the lambda plus delta from this. But in E mu i, what happens to each power x, each variable x i? It either occurs with power 1 or with power 0, right. E mu i is precisely uh, monomials of the form x i 1, x i 2, x i mu i, okay. So, you just choose a set of mu i of the variables and you put them in and you multiply them together. So, whatever monomial you start with here, you will be um, at each step you will either be increasing each x i by 1 or not. You will start with a monomial here and then at each stage you will go to each of the x i's and you will either increase it by 1 or not. And at the i th stage you will take mu i of the variables and increase their powers by at most 1. And you want to end up with the strictly decreasing monomial x to the lambda plus delta, okay. Um, now, suppose you start with a monomial that is not strictly decreasing. Well, you are certainly starting with a monomial that is that has distinct powers because we saw that the moment two powers are the same, it cannot occur in a alternating polynomial. And at each stage you get something alternating, right, because you are multiplying an alternating polynomial by a symmetric polynomial. If you start with something where the powers are not strictly decreasing and you end up with something where the powers are strictly decreasing and since at each stage you can only increase the powers by at most 1, it means that somewhere in between you would have gone through a stage where two of the powers are equal and at that stage you would have had a cancellation. So, those monomials where you start off with powers that are not strictly decreasing will not contribute anything to the coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta because at some intermediate stage their contributions will cancel out. So, you only have to start with a strictly decreasing monomial here, but here there is only one strictly decreasing monomial which makes our life much easier. It is the monomial x 1 to the m 1 minus 1, x 2 to the m 2 minus 2 and so on x 1 to the m minus 1, x 2 to the m minus 2, um, x m minus 1, that is the, that is the monomial you start off with. And now at each stage you multiply some things, okay. So, you just choose um, at the ith stage, so you start with this. And then um, at the ith stage, you have j 1 less than j mu i. These are the powers that you will increment, distinct indices. To increment
uh, in such a way that the resulting monomial has strictly decreasing powers. So, I also after you, so I will start with this, then I will multiply, I will increase some of the powers, but I want what results to also have strictly increasing powers. Otherwise, it does not matter, the strictly decreasing powers. Okay. Let us just do an example, because that will really explain the thing very clearly and then in the end, I will just write down the algorithm. And what we want to do is count the number of ways of getting x lambda plus delta and so we will take, you can think of each of these as a path. You start with this monomial and then you choose some things at each stage and then you increment them and you end up with x lambda plus delta. So, that is a path and we would like to show that the number of paths is k uh, lambda prime mu. That is, uh, we would like to index each path by a semi standard Young tableau of type mu and shape lambda prime. That is the game. Let us look at this example. Take four variables uh, mu equals 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4 twos and 2 ones. And let me just see one path starting with this, um, one path corresponding to this and see where we end up. So, we will start off with x 1 cubed x 2 squared, x 3 and then there is an x 4 to the power 0 here, right? x 3 to the power 1 and then there is an x 4 to the power 0, which not really. And now, you can increment 3 of these by 1. What can I do? If I increment one of these powers, I had better increment the one before it as well, because otherwise they would become equal, right. Remember at each stage I must make sure that the powers remain in strictly decreasing order. The only way I can do this is by incrementing the first few, because once I cannot leave any gaps from the left. So, I have only one choice at this stage. I will increment this, this and this by 1 and this I will not increment at all. So, I get uh, x 1 to the 4, x 2 cubed, x 3 squared. And I want a semi standard Young tableau with, um, I want k lambda prime mu, right. So, I want a semi standard Young tableau with 3 ones. So, here you see these 3 ones have appeared on the leftmost. I will just put 3 ones in the first three, in the first row and in the first three uh, columns of my semi standard Young tableau. I am now going to build up my semi standard Young tableau from this process. Okay. At the next stage, I have to increment. So, here I still have an x 4 to the power 0. I have to increment two of these guys. Now, I have a little choice. For example, I could increment this and uh, I need not increment that. But if I do increment this, then I must increment that. Right? Uh, just uh, since this new possibility has opened up, let me do that. Let me increment this. And now, I am forced to, um, the only other option is to increment this. And these have to stay the same. So, these, these I do not increment. And I need to put two twos. So, I will put uh, one two in the first row and the other two in the second row. And uh, so, in the fourth column. Okay. Now, uh, I have come till here. Now, an another two I have to in increment. So, let us just see, let us say I do this. Then what I get is x 1 to the power 6, 
x2 to the power 4 x3 squared x4 and I have two threes I need to put them in the first and second rows. The reason that at each stage I am getting a semi standard young tableau is this condition that the powers must remain strictly increasing that is what is making it work. And let us say at the next stage I will increase these two. This will still give me a strictly increasing because here the here the jump is two. Get x1 to the power 6, x2 to the power 4, x3 cubed, x4 squared. So that means this is the fourth step. I'll put in the fours at the last two places. So I've done one, two, three, four. I have to do three more steps. So now two more I have to increment. just so let us say now I increment the first two I get x 1 to the power 7 x 2 to the power 5 x 3 cubed x 4 squared which means I must put 5s here and here and now I must increment one of them let me just start abbreviating my notation because it is getting boring. So, let us say I increase this, then I get x 1 to the 7, x 2 to the 6, um, x 3 cubed, x 4 squared and so I must put a 6 only in the second column. And then let us say I will just increase uh, this one. So, um, uh, so I will finally what I will get suppose now I increase the third one what is the monomial I get? I get x 1 to the 7 x 2 to the 6 x 3 squared x 2 x 4 x 3 cubed x 4 squared and here I must put a 7 because I incremented the third one. Now, what is the relation between the shape of this semi standard young tableau and this new monomial I have got? Well, how many times do I in increment x 1? As many as there are rows in the first column of this. How many times do I increment x 2? As many as there are rows in the second column of this. So, but I started with x to the delta. So, this is, um, so this uh, the if I write down the partition whose um, uh, parts are the number of uh, entries in the columns of this, then that is this is the form x to the lambda plus delta. In other words, if this has shape lambda prime, then the monomial I end up with is x to the lambda plus delta. So that is basically the proof. So, if you want to just uh, write down exactly what the algorithm is, uh, it is summed up by saying that increment x j at the ith stage if and only if the semi standard young tableau has i in the jth column and vice versa. And the fact that this is a semi standard young tableau will correspond to the fact that at each stage you get a strictly increasing monomial, a strictly decreasing monomial. Okay, so that is a sketch of the proof, probably better to sit down quietly and work it out again. So, your question is this delta seems to depend on the m, but the sure polynomial should not depend on the m, right. Yeah, so, I guess it does not matter. Mm. 
yeah but this formula changes with m i mean this changes with m this changes with m the thing you are really asking is if i look at cauchy's definition of the schur function how does this really change with m and it seems that the contribution of the m's will cancel out it's not surprising um, because uh, the the last bit will somehow of the two determinants will be the same and uh, they'll give these factors which will cancel out it would be a nice idea to do some examples and see this okay now we are really pretty much home um let's see maybe i'll just work here we don't really need any of this anymore here's a corollary says that if f is a homogeneous homogeneous symmetric function well let's say symmetric polynomial in m variables of degree n and m is greater than or equal to n this is the condition i told you earlier of having enough variables to do whatever you want and if f you look at its expansion in terms of schur polynomial c lambda s lambda lambda partitions of n then c lambda is the coefficient of f of x to the lambda plus delta in f a delta why is this let's use cauchy's definition of schur functions what this identity is saying is that f times a delta is summation c lambda a lambda plus delta and as i explained earlier here there's only uh, here the coefficient uh, there's only one strictly decreasing monomial and therefore because of that in this sum the coefficient of x to the lambda x stays to lambda plus delta is c lambda so um, c lambda is the coefficient of x stays to lambda plus delta in f times a lambda just a simple consequence of cauchy's theorem and this is what gives us um, frobenius's formula for the characters of symmetric groups along with the transition formula from schur functions to um, power sum symmetric functions because the trace of w lambda so this is a permutation whose cycle decomposition is a partition of shape lambda they are all in the same conjugacy class it doesn't matter which one i take v mu is the coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta in e mu times e delta and the proof is just that apply this corollary this corollary to the identity p mu is summation x lambda mu s lambda this was the transition matrix between power sums and schur functions 
remember this is the character precisely what we want. So, the coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta in p mu a delta is just x lambda mu which is this character. This was the transition matrix we had obtained in the last class and using the definition of Kostka's interpretation of sure functions. 